Thanks so much for being a part of our study in the Gospel of Luke. We're in chapter 12. Rudy, thank you for being a part of this. I really, Rudy and I for 20 years have sat across the table, not like this exactly, but we've had coffee, we've had our Bibles, and we've been able to visit. And uh, thank you for joining us on this. In verse 54, he said to the crowds, when you see a cloud rising in the west, you immediately say it's going to rain. So it happens. When you see the south wind blowing, you say, there'll be a scorching heat, and it happens. You hypocrites, you know how to interpret the appearance of the earth and sky. Why do you not know how to interpret the present time? So let's talk about weather forecasters and in time forecasters. Um, so weather forecasters know how to interpret what's going to happen, whether they're complete with all of their Doppler radio, radio radar, radar, thank you, or all that, or whether they were just people who could look at the clouds and tell versus the signs of the times. So Rudy, why don't you talk a little bit about that for us? Well, uh, when you look back through history, uh, everything looks like the end. And there were people that were saying that it was the end throughout time. Yes. And uh, they're certainly talking that way today, uh, that there is a n number of people out there uh, proclaiming that. And for me, uh, when I, I do listen to them once in a while just to see what's going on in their head. And, uh, but the fact is, is that the Bible tells you, lays it out. And they would say that that's true, that they're basically saying what they believe the Bible is saying is happening today. Yeah. The one thing is, is that uh, the sacrificial system hasn't started in Jerusalem yet. And Daniel is told plainly, and Ezekiel is told plainly, that the sacrificial system will be restarted. Yeah. Uh, that is the stopwatch for the last seven years. Yeah. Uh, but it cannot be tomorrow. Mm -hmm. It can't be, it can't be two years from today right. because the eternal clock uh, is as perfect as, as the moon cycling the earth. Yeah. It's as perfect as the constellations. Yeah. Uh, so the one thing that we do know is Jesus is near. Yeah. And uh, I always thought I'm kind of like one of the witnesses in the Gospel of Luke that uh, I would be here to see him come back. Yeah. Uh, not so sure any longer. Sure, sure. But uh, it doesn't break my faith. Uh, what it does is kind of what we were talking about a couple of days ago. I just. I want to make it better for the people that are here on the end because I I have seen or felt the anguish in the earth at the end. Yeah, it's good. It will be hard to handle. Yeah, and God was going to ha God will have to encourage everybody to be able to withstand that. Yeah. So, <clears throat> getting a connection with Him right now seems like the best thing to do and it's not necessarily only for myself it's for whatever uh, i can do that makes it past my death yeah it's good i uh, frustrate people when we talk about end time because i have never really studied it i mean i made an a on the book of revelation when i took it in seminary but i have not studied it like some ministers do. And what I say to people, I want to underscore what you just said, is that if you are prepared, if you are doing everything you can to live with the Lord and to serve Him and to bring the gospel to other people, you're doing your part. 
Yes. And he is not going to ask my advice or yours about when to start this stuff up. We just need to be prepared. Right, and that means you have to have a relationship with him, and yes. relationships are not uh, sustained in silence. This, this is true. Let's, let's, let's try to get one more. All right, this is a little bit different, uh, and I don't know why Luke put it in this order, but he did, and we're going to study it. Verse 27, why do, you, why do you not judge for yourselves what's right? Thus, when you go with your accuser before a magistrate on the way, make an effort to settle the case, or you'll be dragged before the judge, and the judge hands you over the officer, the officer throw you into prison. I'll tell you, you'll never get out until you've paid the very last penny. So this is settling up your debts. Basically what he's saying here. It is, but <clears throat> he's telling you how you would settle up your debt on the earth. And I believe that the, con the difference is the separation from a couple of uh, passages before this comes in what belongs to the world will stay here. What belongs to the kingdom lasts forever. And why are you fighting over stuff that is not eternal? Yeah. Why not make your peace on the way to court because you know that it's not eternal? Yeah. And, uh, you know, it has, you know, I know what happens to me when I forgive somebody. Mm -hmm. And it's just not lip service, I forgive you. Yeah. But when I forgive them, the newsreel in my mind's eye stops twirling. Yeah. Because when that's going on, I just keep getting better and better and more right all the time. But on the way to court, mm -hmm. if I really forgive them and do what they ask, then really that part of anxiety, that uh, thing that keeps seeing, making, forcing me to think about myself uh, is taken away and I'm very thankful. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Uh, right. You, you basically, you're asking the Lord to forgive you the way that you forgive. I remember Josh and I talking about that one time and we both decided we couldn't stand the consequence of not forgiving. <laughs> that's right. So there are times when I actually, that's where the rubber meets the road for me. Yeah. I, I have to forgive him because I can't stand the consequences of not, and I really don't want to. Sure. So yeah. there is great benefit with that. And, the, and it's, the thing is, there is a judgment in that, and the judgment is good for you. That's right. That's right. My, my way to respond to that, Galatians 2.20, I've been crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, but not I, Christ lives in me. The life I live, I live now in faith, the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. If only. If I, only. Yeah. So I have said so many times, Lord, I don't like this person you love him. Please love him through me. God, I don't want, I don't want to forgive this person. Please forgive him through me. And that sometimes has been prayed over and over and over until my heart got right. Yeah, this is not a magic trick.